scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Somehow we have this belief that because God is able, without our engaging Him through the application of the wisdom of God, things will just happen just like that. We are tired of irresponsible fathers. We are tired of irresponsible gentlemen. We are tired of nuisances to society. A gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents. Blasting in tongues but depending there. It should not be. It should not be. There is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life. Is that true? I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking especially to our gentlemen. Please, let's go back to God and plan. This rat race of visiting everybody. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. My brother, what are you doing with your life? You say it is well. No, it's not well. You sit down and plan. What are you doing with your life? Oh, I want to marry Apostle. Wonderful. And eat what? Show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking, the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family. Especially, do you know, because in Africa, let's be very honest, if I handpick everybody here, almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him. Is that true? Leave the ladies. Gentlemen, I'm talking to you. I'm coming to the ladies. Pick anybody at random. There is one neighbor, one, one cousin you know, one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed. So gone are the days where you say, I have enough for myself. No. You must flog it out. Plan. 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances. Even if they give you a message on rapture, you say, I'm born again. I have a goal. I'm studying on finances. I'm spending the month of February to study on faith. On faith. I'm studying the month of, uh, the month of March to study on the anointing. I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. 
We're going to be studying the book of Proverbs, all the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read, you glanced through. Let's use this break period to extensively study the book of Proverbs. Go online. There are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book. Study carefully. Don't read to finish. Read to understand. The book of Proverbs, the Lord put this in my heart. We're studying the fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God, God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again. It's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year, they will, I, will, I will have to commit to something that costs me, both to God and to the ministry. Every year without fail, I do this. I'm not talking of 10 naira, 20 naira, something that even you, you will stand and say, Lord, I give you thanks between you and God. Why are you doing that? You are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming. Now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation. This has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money. And this is a mistake that men of God make when it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice. You see them expressing a lot of desperation. I, I always say this, every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members. It is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which we are complying with the precepts of the kingdom. Are we together? These five things, I promise you that when you do them, you will be ready for an amazing 2018. Number one, thanksgiving. Number two, review. That number two for me is one of the most important. You have to review. Don't just wait and say, ah, apostle, send us the prophetic word for next year. My body is shaking. I need to know what is the prophetic word. This is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again. And, 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 and then again and again, and they find out that the year remains the same. Different words coming, but there's no progress in our lives. So go back, get a notebook. Don't just get a little piece of paper. It's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny. Get a notebook and sit down and write these things out. Come up by the Spirit. One of the things I can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will correct you. He will applaud you. He will rebuke you. He will encourage you. He will challenge you. Let the chastening of the Lord not be something that you resent. Whatever happens in that secret place, embrace it as a refiner's fire. It is going to be the key to your next level. Is that true? Praise God. So you do this. This is my first encouragement for us tonight. These five things. The Lord put it in my heart and I felt to share with us to help us maximize our time. Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law Solomon is teaching us here for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother 
he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the her wisdom understanding forsake her not and she shall preserve thee take note the benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee seven says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 says exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor who will bring you wisdom and understanding not just wisdom wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her we're reading to verse 10 verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear O my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of christ wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to profess scriptural solution there are cultural solutions to life's problems there are occultic solutions to life problems there are emotional solutions to life's problems none of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions but the wisdom of god the wisdom of god i have pursued the wisdom of god with my life because when I was exposed to my own folly and the fact that I am so limited and the consequences of foolishness the Bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of god's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind I like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives i want us to carefully examine the things that we do the degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of god every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a default in the wisdom of god it's an uncomfortable truth but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom i am ever ready to be shown by god the areas in my life where i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god it doesn't embarrass me i want to know i search for it like one who is looking for treasure if you do not contend for wisdom 
your life will be an unending circle of pain an unending circle of regrets an unending circle of many things most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. It says he's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, it makes you wise. The word of God teaches you how to relate with difficult people. The word of God teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble. The word of God teaches you how to respond to unbelievers. Many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith. Wisdom teaches you how to communicate. Wisdom teaches you that when you are angry, be silent because every Every time you speak, you will speak in the flesh. There are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira. They uttered words that they are still paying for it today. Are we together? Our challenges, Dr. Mike Murdoch will say there is no money problem anywhere. And I agree with him. Most of our challenges, because you see, we are victims of our understanding. And most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding. Guess what the Bible says? It says, through wisdom, a house is built. Then it says, by understanding, it is established. The firmness of that house is a product of understanding. It says, true knowledge is the house filled with every pleasurable thing. We must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business. This is the greatest book that will help your marriage. This is the greatest book. The sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here. We have read it like a religious book. We have read it to preach. We have read it to, to carry out Bible studies and prayer sessions. But we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate. This is the book that coordinates our success. There is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision-making process will be accurate. Even if you study psychology, it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions. I have lost confidence in myself outside of the world. It says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world. Listen, this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word. I have meticulously built my life on this word. I don't trust any other thing that is not this word. I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year. I want you to return to a place 
where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word. Many of us pray, but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom. Our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word. It's very clear that we are not being governed by the word. I can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication. I'm not talking of linguistic excellence. I'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words. I see your behavior. I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance, when responding to your critic, your critic already knows the truth. Don't try to explain. It's a waste of time. You don't respond to critics by verbal communication. You respond to critics by consistency. Consistency of your results. Is that true? When I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance, it is because we have not seen the deception of pride. The deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away. That's exactly what pride does. I love the word of God. I stopped reading my Bible to finish it. I stopped reading my Bible to cram scriptures. I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong see i tried it on my own wife look at how she's behaving now you tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you your prayer stopped being answered that's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce. You see, let me tell you something. If I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered, as simple as neatness, I know you don't have respect for the word of God. If the word of God can purge your spirit, then your life will reflect it. You cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty, unkept, looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter. No, sir. No, sir. The word of God will make you to buy an iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings. There is a way kings behave. And the Bible tells you that you have been made according to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. We have been made unto God a kingdom of kings and priests. So you speak like a king. You act like a king. Is that true? It is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa. Christian versus Yoruba. Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture. Most of us, our lives have been destroyed because of our, our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenets that are completely anti-Christ. So although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual, but the, the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight God in our lives. I have no loyalty to anything that is not of God. This is it. This is my new culture. 
scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe. I'm not saying culture is bad in itself, but trust me, there are demonic and satanic areas. There are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves, but I tell you they are weights. A weight is something that can provide an impedance. It can stop your movement. It says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life, in our place, we don't do this. In our place, women cannot talk. Who is this woman preaching? I can't listen to her because in our, which your place? Who invented it? Oh, God is speaking. I will listen. In our place, young people don't talk to old people even respectfully even under the anointing are you seeing that now it is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom they drove children from coming to jesus something about their culture taught them that and jesus said, ah, 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 ah. let the little children come to me and do not forbid them he said for for such that means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning that until you become like one of these not childish but childlike very malleable in your faith and understanding he says the kingdom is for such are you getting blessed tonight get wisdom get understanding make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus although I was born in so 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 place I was born under so 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 condition by the grace of God my children will not live under that kind of condition the Lord by his spirit will lift me it's not about Nazareth it's not about where you come from it's about your ability to walk with the Word of God and bring that transformation hallelujah by the grace of god i have made it a personal commitment as a minister that i will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors never never you will never see me do that i love my people wonderful people love my region where i come from but by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We are all in Christ. So I cannot see I can say I K is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta, and I say you are my person. Be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences ah, 
Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai. It is the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry, you see that? Living a fake and a foolish life. That's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children. The Bible says it. The Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing. That there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing. Regardless of whatever opinions are available scripture cannot be broken it is by these two immutable things God swore his word will not be broken heaven and earth will pass away but brothers and sisters men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance nations and kingdoms will rise and fall but the word of God remains consistent one of the greatest fears if I would say in my life is to find out that at the end of my life I believe they lie I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he will tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. This ministry is a tithing ministry. I'm a tithing person. There is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us. That's why there is no amount of recession. I say it with all humility. By the grace of God Almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of God. For he said, I will build my church. And if you allow me to build it, I will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail. This is the wisdom of God. I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is it is the word of god that gave me that wisdom so i can insult a man because i do not like something about him yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me it is for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep there are many people who would have cheaply received miracles but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them the scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel he didn't tell you the vessel is golden he said the vessel is earthen so he can be angry like elijah or temperous like moses they still are anointed when i found out I don't have any problem with any man of God. You never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I 
I learned from this scripture that as a man, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I stop wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here. Gone are the days where people try to buy suit, buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back. Have you seen territories like that? They try to do physical things. They have not educated the people in that environment. Then they make tap. In six months, they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment. No sensitization. So I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes, buying shoes, buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me. Oh my God, and how, how true. This is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture. The supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding it is true are we together the wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree even it be cut short in our society where we are we are more than happy to conclude on people you look at someone and say, this guy used to be an arm robber. There's no hope for him. But when you study the word of God, the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight. And my Bible says that rejected stone. Ha! Ah, that rejected stone. I'm speaking to someone in your family. And all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people. There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality and right now they are not they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them they maintain their spiritual lives by themselves but there are people who started this year saying lord if you are looking for any vessel can you use this drunkard and god said that's all i want come and right now as i speak to you they are in various stages around the world setting a place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things when you understand this you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people you don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say oh dear poor woman because god can pick someone you see the word of god makes men wise the way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture whether it is a poor man a rich man I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. No, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the Baba of Joseph knew he was babbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me, oh. There were people of Basanjo lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, quit before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adulam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood there. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. 
making us wise hold your bible in one minute and i'd like you to pray and say lord there is there is wisdom in this scripture there is wisdom in this scripture there is wisdom in this scripture i'm tired of foolishness in my life lord i come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of god the quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own, your own formula. Hallelujah. Sit down. The wisdom of God. Come. The wisdom of God teaches us how to relate with people. Is that true? When, when you study the wisdom of God, the word of God, you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say, call me, text me, be my friend. That friendship is a harvest. You have to sow the seed. So if I sit down and I find out that I love God, but there are no friends. As a lady, nobody likes me. As a guy, nobody likes me. The secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship. See that? When you lack helpers in your life, the Bible gives you a prescription. When you lack helpers in your life, I can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing. Among them, there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own. It is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them. Are we learning? How about fear? Living in fear. There are many of us we have used our words to program woes. Ladies, ah, it is not for us. We are not us. We are the we are the um uh, what they call that thing. We are the outcasts. We are the ones who our parents cannot just leave it to these people. And the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake. We have programmed nonsense and rubbish. A name God did not call you. You have allowed yourself to be called it again and again. You called yourself ugly. There is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly. You called yourself irresponsible. The word of God does not call you that way. Open my eyes. Help me believe. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence. Confidence is not pride. Uh -uh. Confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture. That's confidence. Stability that is based on the truth of God's word. If you tell me, Apostle, I, I was passing across a shrine and I heard them talking about you, that they will kill you tomorrow. I'm going to sleep this night. I won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of God. And it can't be joy, it's a joke. If you know the mysteries that keep this man standing, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. When the spirit of death knocks on your door, three scriptures come out like, like fire. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Number two, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. Number three, I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, I advise you and I chose it. Do you fight a man outside his will? Even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks. Why wouldn't Satan knock? Why wouldn't death knock? If God is knocking to enter, 
I don't know about you. The Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. Anything that must enter my life, if God knocks to enter, nothing will enter on his own. It's my revelation. So when men say there is a casting down, they allowed it somewhere. For me, when it knocks, I say, get back. For me, there is a lifting up. See, I'm not just entertaining you. I'm showing you how the word of God makes a man wise. It constructs your understanding. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefit. I expect favor every day. Recycled after 24 hours. It's not because I'm a preacher. I expect it. I found it. I found thy word and I ate it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. The word was not written for preachers, brothers and sisters. It was written for those who can believe. My mother started learning these principles and you would find that people would start calling take a bag of rice give your mother take this give your mother working for her she's not a preacher and it's not because she's my mother it works for anybody he said declare ye that he might be justified i will never say i am a failure no sir no sir no sir no sir just because there is no food in your room most believers will come guide this life self aluta continua victoria escata is a, is a course you are recite you are enchanting is the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine and you read it that's what we have been doing you come in and you see lack and insufficiency you declare while i look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen i know that one day i will feed nations come on now you are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening you don't give room to depression though he slay me yet will i trust him i know my redeemer lives Bible said Job did not curse God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah, a mega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being. It used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation. You lovingly say, no, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. The Bible says he has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. You know it. Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions. Very vulgar descriptions of themselves the goal is for it to be funny so somebody usually there are a group of people who are like the referees i will say my own you'll be angry and say your own and then you know that's why people were not doing well notice people enter js1 and by the time they finish writing exams they come out the only thing they come out with is a good certificate common sense gone health gone they are sick they have troubles has not given me the spirit of fear the bible says i shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day in my world there's nothing like ember months he daily loads this is the day the lord has made he didn't say the lord and satan the lord alone made that day satan too was waiting for god to make the day it was god that made the day i rejoice in it and i am glad you will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why. I said, Kai, this word, Nigeria. I said, no. He said, for with joy shall I draw. I've taught you this. Frustrate Satan by remaining joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not in your results. If you rejoice in your results, the day you don't see it, you will not rejoice again. If you rejoice in your CGPA, your job, your new employment, I rejoice in the Lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it too. 
in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like love say hey <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he say it's true go and drop that report and say lord if i die who will dance you are reducing the number of people who will praise you ask hezekiah Isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said, Hezekiah, set your house in order. Hezekiah said, nonsense. I respect you. You are a prophet of God, but leave me and God. Shut the door. Hezekiah said, God, what did I hear you say? Remember your temple. When you talk about the temple, God listens. So, Lord, your house. So, and he said, no, 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 please. Isaiah, go back. department i was i was um yes on tuesday i was rounding up their session with them and i told them something i said as a worker in this ministry there are benefits that should be yours they are not they are not privileges they are rights as a worker there are certain things that should be yours the bible said a worker is worthy the word worthy there is deserving of his wages not just a worker in koinonia a worker in the house of god the closest simile to wages is salary that means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me you have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of nigeria have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of god is god speaking to you the way i speak the way I understand is a revelation when you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are you are an idiot you are a stupid child I don't know why you and your foolish mother you are revealing something the kicking is a revelation it's a revelation that number one you don't know that children come from God number two you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit there is a priesthood office that fatherhood has the mother of Jabez was angry she didn't know that motherhood is an office and out of her anger she named her child Jabez every time Jabez was to be good that office cried in the realm of the spirit and one day Jabez was angry and said no I can't continue like this I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger your father looks at you and just says look it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole a shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger he cursed you said this is how you will be like a goat all through your life and you will think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same true story i'm rounding up i know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stop stealing he will not stop stealing yes true story god is my witness he was a popular face that i knew this guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him sign it in two weeks he's coming back again that prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life comfortable the only thing that can set him free is the anointing you see the reason why we speak over people yes you speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives listen brothers and sisters i want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the old testament in the new testament a man treats his wife bad and the bible says his heavens will be closed this is why many fathers are going through hard life in nigeria i'm telling you this this attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag 
You are a father here. Please apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens will be closed or not. So you can labor. You finish insulting your wife. Call her stupid woman. You and all your five useless children. You are going for the business meeting. They call you when you are almost there and say, sir, just go back. It won't work again. You say, what do you mean it won't work? I just prepared my paper, the heavens. You always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness. depletion from as they say from grace to grass close heavens that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer listen let me encourage you with these keys that I've shared with you I expect every wise young man whether you are staying with your parents or not or if if both of your parents have gone to be with the Lord you have spiritual parents you have all kinds of representatives if I were you do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them as you are going home now don't just go as a big man big man no money close heavens go and meet your parents mommy i don't have so much money but i made pepper soup for you i went round the city looking for bush meat that you like i found it ah really my daughter you mean bush meat okay god bless you ah mommy no i came with this one specially please pray for me what kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look and say, kneel down. That's it. I can guarantee you that prayer is not noise. He said, go and make me venison. That I may bless you. You don't bless without venison. The foolishness of young people. You stroll to anybody and they don't bless me. You think it works like that? Was, I, was it just because he was hungry? It's a principle honor your father and your mother i'm telling you this is some of us this is what will break this joblessness these problems some of us you just need to go back home and say mommy i'm sorry for five years i have given you a lot of headache you people don't even like seeing me but i want to tell you that i got connected to a ministry and god has changed my life i just want you to speak over my life i don't have much but i came with 100 naira recharge card they may have 10,000 naira in their phone but that 100 naira is what will open you up they will say kneel down let me tell you whether your father is a believer or not if he speaks to you it's an office it will open your destiny are we together back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking they learn how to ride bike during christmas <laughs> until they die from it and you just sit down and say look three or four friends let's see what we can do one day small program somewhere at the back of one football field put one speaker and the rest organize something even if it's for the children Instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children, gather them. Let them, even if it's biscuit and sopo or something, you have done something noble for the kingdom. And then take God on Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. You shall obey and serve me and I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, Himadonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be.
seal the remaining part of this year seal the remaining part of this year go ahead and pray Counsel that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life. The remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days. Am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Shabakatoka Sadabakadabaladaba. In 16 days. You can still confirm your word concerning my life. serious prayer right now most of us are going back maybe to spend a break with our loved ones or around I'd like you to pray when Jonah entered a boat people started weeping and losing everything because one man in disobedience was in the boat he made the boat unusually heavy and was about to capsize but when the ark of God entered the house of a man called Obed Edom without prayer in 90 days three months everything changed I like you to pray and say Lord I am a living tabernacle as I go home or wherever it is that I'll be going to I represent your possibilities I represent the heart of God go ahead and pray I go home to smash the works of darkness every activity of divination every activity of darkness over my loved ones in the name of Jesus as I step my feet I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost the heavens are open unto me In the name of Jesus, I 
challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death. Take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I lift the standard of the blood. I lift the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. I lift the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness, I cause infirmity, I cause sickness. We cause cancer, we cause arthritis. We cause hepatitis. We cause every killer disease. Every terminal disease. Take your hands off our loved ones. We cause the spirits of poverty and hardship. Stealing resources from our loved ones. Causing conflict in homes. Pray, challenge the spirit. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? I like you to program favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family help us for my destiny Lord I receive I receive I receive all kinds of favor all kinds of favor favor men are rising men are rising in the name of Jesus favor hallelujah listen I want you to believe me we are rounding up but you see not many people in this life have truly encountered favor favor is an experience that happens once but the result continues without stop we are going to pray this prayer again listen the hardship in many of our families even salary will not cure it is that true there are some of us now if you get a job and you are giving your loved ones three three hundred thousand per month even after five years it will not solve the problem 15 people in the house only one person is working is earning twenty thousand that's a cost when i say favor i'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in america take your mind away from any man don't add faces your own is to just create with your words are you ready to pray for me and for my family lord surprise us surprise us before
before December 31st, Lord, do something that has not been done. A major dimension of favor. Pray, no matter what kind you have seen, provoke another. Provoke another. Pray, provoke another. In the name of Jesus, I create it. I call it for. I call it for in my life. I call it for in this ministry. I call it for for my loved ones. I call it for strange favor between now and thirty first December. Strange favor. Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. I'd like you to pray. Listen. One of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It is terrible to have someone in a family that does is has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mode you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again I have been born again I'd like you to pray two things Lord massive encounters I'd like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know Jesus. Lord, this is, this is the season. They must encounter Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. I pray for my uncle. I pray for my step-siblings. Pray, pray. Lord, we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us financial troubles spiritual troubles they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade give them an encounter give them visions give them dreams in the name of jesus break their pride oh god give them solid encounters encounters with your power change them change them change them some of them have vowed that they will never give their life to christ i like you to pray and say lord in your majesty prove them wrong prove them wrong hallelujah one last prayer and then we are done for tonight listen all these prayer points I'm giving you, when you go back, pray them. Especially this prayer of salvation. I can tell you this. With the little experience I have counseling families, 90% of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for Satan to destroy people. Notice how Satan does it. In every family, he must search for somebody. One bad boy, one bad girl, or maybe our fathers, our mothers, everyone tries to press into God. You just hear that police are calling you. Go to the police station. They will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop. The bill is 400,000. And before you know it, the money you have saved, that's a devourer. All this stealing you see young people do especially all these young guys steal something shamefully come and put their parents in trouble the money that should be the school fees of five people you have to take it and go and settle police is the devil what about the young boys that have not reached age of driving they smuggle out a car and go somewhere an expensive car they just bought with their friends get drunk and smash the car these are all the skimmings of darkness. Many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children. A lady jumps the fence and disappears one week. Nobody has seen her.
they are all afraid they start contacting the police paying money and then she strolls in after eight days and say why are you looking for me it's the devil a smart young gentleman about to graduate they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party christmas party that is the birth of jesus christ drinks to stupor and the friends strip, strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground they come and carry him in the morning arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends christmas going to the station i like you to say the devil is a liar i'm, I'm showing you these are the things in in many families satan does not want to see everybody rising you see a gentleman the only graduate and because he's a giver a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100 thousand per week in six months it has dried the finances of the family he said i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower you have to be watchmen when you are at home don't see things happen and join everybody cry you know what to do go and lock yourself and say lord this cannot continue to be quarrel between father and mother quarrel between husband and wife all these bad bad things the devil brings during this season a time of joy and merriment all of a sudden that spirit comes into our families fire on the mountain everybody's living like a stranger don't you see that is an attack i'm telling you so that when you go back home everybody used to run away but now you are the one who will move and say no way i put an end to this evil in the name of jesus lift your hands let me speak over your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit as you return back you return in the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ any name and any identity the devil has given your family that is a mockery to redemption i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare that within this one month may the lord change your story i pray from the depth of my heart for any individual and any family that is called Ichabod that the glory has departed I declare that because of your going back let there be a restoration of glory let there be a restoration of honor let there be a restoration of dignity anyone here still trusting God for a job I'm declaring you will not return next year without a job in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare if there is any manipulation of witchcraft for those of you who are traveling to the village and there are all kinds of warnings here and there either because your people are used to witchcraft I declare you will go and come back safely you will go and return safely in the name of Jesus hear me any strange spirits that enters your family during these times of love to scatter the families I declare in the name of Jesus their end comes this season <laughs> hallelujah there are families right now who are even waiting for you to come because even one chicken they cannot afford for Christmas I call on my God I cry before the God of heaven that between now and next week let there be a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies hallelujah I pray for those who are students do you know there are students that when they go home as soon as their parents see them their hearts begin to palpitate because of school fees in the name of Jesus the kind of favor your parents have never seen I pray in the name of Jesus let there be that kind of favor for them the kind of favor that will make your school fees look like pocket money in the name of Jesus Christ 
I pray for your spiritual life. Most people leave this environment and go back and return back as cold as whatever. I pray for you. You will return with even greater fire than you left with. Whoever the devil is arranging in your life between now and January to destroy you, I prophesy that your paths will not cross. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those of you who will be traveling, there are people who will be traveling from tomorrow, whether by air, whether on the road, I speak to your journey. I decree and declare, you no armed robbers on the road. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will arrive safely and you will return back safely. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to wave your hands to Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. After tonight, we'll officially be closing for the year and um, we'll be resuming. Thank you. We'll be resuming 19th. 19th is the third Friday of January 2018. If you'll be there, I want you to clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very quickly before I take the altar call. Now, we usually send the prophetic word. Please listen. We are a ministry that is guided by prophecy. And I usually send the prophetic word 6 p.m. on the 31st. 6 p.m. on the 31st. How many of you are here and you do not get SMSs from Koinonia? Let me see your hands. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, protocol department, sadly, the public relations department have not started their work. But for now, protocol, you please do their work. Let's see how we can... Um, if you have not been getting text messages from the ministry, this is what I want you to do. After the grace, uh, where do we do it now? Okay, at, okay, just somewhere here where Aaron is stretching his hands, you can just come around there and you quickly write your name and your number and then we'll have it and upload it on the central ministry database so that you can receive text messages. Now, when you receive the text message, it is for you to incorporate it in your retreat and pray it of course, when we come here, we'll open up the revelations. But I believe with all my heart that next year will make this year look like child's play. In the name of Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. You are here. This is our last service. An opportunity to connect you to Jesus. Please, no moving around. Overflow 1, 2, 3. Those following online. You are here. And... Um, you're saying, Apostle, I've been hearing you preach, but every time I want to come out, there is a resistance. This may be an opportunity you will not want to waste. Jesus is calling you. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have the way, God's life. Hallelujah. You are here and you are saying, man of God, before we close for the year, I want to tap into this triumph package. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Probably at one time you made a decision for Jesus, but for some reason you found out that things have just gone haywire in your life and you've been out of touch with God and you're saying, can I join them? You're most welcome. These two categories of people, I'm going to count one to five very quickly. Wherever you are, this is our last night together for the year. You do not want to miss this opportunity with Jesus. Wherever you are, go ahead and come quickly. Overflow one, two, three, make your way to the front very quickly. God bless you. Koinonia, I appreciate them. People are coming. Come to Jesus. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Win that war tonight. Win that war tonight. Make a decision for Jesus. I believe there are still people outside. If you're coming from Overflow 3, please run very quickly. Run very quickly so that you can join. Those online, you can follow us and say the prayer when I lead them to. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are there still people coming? God bless you. Jesus is still speaking to people. God bless you. Young and old, make your way. Make your way very quickly. Apostle, I'm not sure whether... 
I'm born again. I've always been in church. Join them very quickly. If you are not sure, it means you are not born again. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who were lost and those who made it. If you didn't make it, you were lost. There was no in between. So join them. You are not sure. You are not sure of your relationship with Jesus. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. You have been suspecting you are saved, but you are not sure. Join them and be assured. There is something called the assurance of salvation. Please, very quickly, let's save time. Our time is gone. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to lift your right hand very high to the heavens. And I want you to pray this prayer. You're not reciting a poem. This is from... It should be from the depth of your heart. Mean it. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Please mean it loud. Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe you love me. You died for me. Shed your blood. For my sins. Tonight. I receive you. Into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I declare, according to your word, that eternal life is mine from tonight and forever. I belong to Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones. We present to you trophies that attest to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you preserve them. There is a grace that keeps men. Keep them in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we commend them to your care, your tutelage, your mentorship. You are the one who can make them expressions of true citizens of the kingdom. And I pray that from tonight, your ministry becomes effectual in their lives. For those who are rededicating their lives to Jesus, I pray for you. The grace to stand, the grace to be consistent, the grace to be ever increasing is released upon you in Jesus' name. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the life of God is at work in you. You move forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. There's a lady waving her hands right now. All of you, please this way in concert. I just want you to follow the lady and they will communicate a few details to you in the name of Jesus. Let's appreciate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, very quickly, um, aside from those who are going out now, aside from those who are going out, in response to the altar call this is our last service for the year what a joy what an honor god has been faithful very 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 faithful um we've not had any challenge all through this year it is something that is worth giving god thanks for indeed he's proven that this is our year of triumph and if this is your first time worshiping with us what a joy um to be at our last service for the year wherever you are Overflow one, two, three. May I request that you please make your way to the front? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap. The blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you